getting started on this trailer taking the shocks off and the airbags I got it jacked up I got the uh, two front axles the tag axle I'm not gonna do right now I don't think at least not right this minute I've got a couple of jack stands underneath this the, the uh, bags on this axle one bag is, is off the other one is unbolted but it's still attached on top the shocks are easier to get to like this and I'm sorry if there's wind noise it is very windy today this is Sunday the I think 29th of, uh, of March and we're just now starting to get some green out here if I cover up we're just now starting to get some green out here a little bit most of the trees most of the trees are still bare I use these two tall these eight ton bottle jacks and I left them jacked up because I'm gonna need them that high to get the thing back down off the off the jacks I use those one on each side and I think I was like right in here with it on the between the back two axles and I was going up a little at a time on each side and just raising up these big jack stands these are the biggest jack stands they got at Harbor Freight and I was uh, and I used just a regular floor jack to jack up these things here to put the, the little jack stands under them this shock here it came off of a pickup truck and the reason I cannot use somebody asked me why I can't use that new um, that new tool that heats up things with electricity why I can't use that I can't think of what it's called right now induction induction heater someone asked me why I can't use that on the shock bolts well maybe I could on the nut on the outside but where these things seize up at the nut on the outside I can get to that with I can heat that up with a torch or put more power on it whatever it takes those will come off what's not going to come off is the this steel sleeve inside the rubber bushing on the shocks and that's that sleeve is is uh, rusted onto the bolt and it's completely seized and might as well be welded on that is not going to come off that's why these have to be cut off okay I got my first cut on the top of this shock um, just cut it off right up there on top with the sawzall and now I'm going to push it over here and see if I got enough room I'll have to cut from underneath and push upwards and cut this bolt off on both sides inside the, the bracket there because this is seized that um, that sleeve inside there is uh, seized onto the bolt and it's not going to come off so I gotta do that and up here on top too I'll have to cut that one out of there as well I did not get through the bolt I got through the shock pretty easy and the blade was still sharp but trying to cut through the bolt the, the blade is is uh, pretty slick there across the teeth now so I'm not going to be able to get through it with a regular steel blade it must be like a grade 8 bolt or something like that I'm probably just going to burn this with a torch but what I don't like about that is sometimes shocks are pressurized I know these wouldn't be after all these years but there's oil in there um, it's just not the safest thing to do plus you're burning all this rubber which is poisonous and it's not a good good thing to burn rubber with a torch but if I can't do anything else I don't know I got one shock off and I cut through one bolt like this and part way into a second one I think it was this one that I cut part way into and I had to change the wheel because it wore the wheel down the four and a half inch cutting wheel down so fast they are cheap wheels from Harbor Freight but I don't know how they 
hold up compared to any other brand. Anyway, I changed the wheel, finished cutting this off, and then I still couldn't get this out of the hole because it was too close to something behind it. And I had to uh, finish by burning it off. Couldn't get at it too good with the torch and the rubber in there, so the burning was kind of a sloppy job, but got it, got one of them off. Of course, there's four cuts to make, one on each side of, uh, of the shock where the rubber bushing is. You gotta just get in there. It's kind of a tight area. So it's, it's not working too good with this, and it would cost a lot of money. These little small four and a half inch uh, cut off grinders are cheap but the one for a six inch is quite a bit more like maybe five times well maybe not it's they're a lot more they're they're like 150 200 dollars and i couldn't find any cheaper than that so i did not order one what i am going to try on the next shock is um these diamond blades from harbor freight and I don't know the brand name they're putting on it is Warrior. I'm going to try one out and see how that works. Well, the diamond blades are not any good. It didn't take but maybe 30 seconds and I realized I'm not getting into the metal at all. And I'm not even on the bolt. I'm just on the top of the shock. And um, it's slick as glass. So... Um, they're not working. Ten bucks for nothing. I don't know what I'm going to do with the other one. I'm going to take another shot at this. This time I went up to Home Depot and I got this Diablo brand um, carbide tooth blade for cutting thick metal. And we'll see if that does anything. And then we got this six pack of um, Milwaukee these are supposed to be for thick metal too it says down here we'll take another shot at it I cannot buy a six inch cutoff wheel anytime soon because it's not a fast moving item so none of the stores carry it and uh, to order it online Home Depot's website says they can have it in about a week or two but with this pandemic going on, this corona, at the time of this video, is this corona thing, we're at the height of it right now. And uh, Amazon is a week out on everything. I think, I think Amazon is actually closer to a month out on, on ordering that six inch cutoff tool with the shield on it. You gotta have the shield uh, working at that speed because if this blade breaks and comes apart at that speed and it hits my hand, it's gonna, halfway take a finger off so anyway we'll see what we can do with the sawzall if not then we just have to cut it with a torch that Diablo carbide toothed blade did make it through this top of the shock but I had a regular steel blade do that yesterday I'm gonna push this thing out of the way and see if I can um, uh, get access and put it to the, the true test, which is to cut through one of these these uh, grade eight bolts. These are grade eight. Uh, it's got the um, got the six points on it. That's why we couldn't get through it without a torch. This carbide tipped blade by Diablo, it is cutting through that grade eight bolt, but very slowly. And it's throwing sparks and I'm trying to keep it wet with oil and I'm getting pretty tired my arms hurt from holding this saw up uh, for about 10 minutes that I've been trying to cut laying on my back and ho holding that saw up like that so I'm going to go ahead and do this with a torch this is a new torch I got it's on propane and it takes a different kind of uh, of hose I think it's I want to say letter T I forgot what the other letter is anyway it um, has a different kind of tip on it too if you look in there 
if you know anything about torch tips you'll see that one's different you use this tip with either natural gas or propane but you can't use natural gas at home unless you have a uh, pressure pump that builds your pressure up and they're kind of pricey and I could probably pull off buying one but I really don't get enough torch work here to justify it but the propane is a lot cheaper than natural excuse me it's a lot cheaper than acetylene doesn't burn quite as hot but it is a much better deal I shut the torch off to show you guys what I'm doing here I already got the top one off of there but I had cut it off from the shock but see the bottom of that shock I've never seen it happen but the, I think that thing might possibly kind of explode a little bit because it is full of oil and sometimes they got air pressure in them and so I just cut the eye off of it kind of carefully because I didn't want that on there while I was concentrating all of this heat on this um, sh on this sleeve that goes through there that the, the bolts you know rusted into that sleeve so I did I cut the eye off of it a lot of smoke that piece of rubber laying there burning and um, and I don't like it I got about 15 minutes in this with a torch or at least it feels like it so it's not uh, not the best way to do this but I don't know what the best way is maybe a six inch cutoff that's not available for another couple of weeks because it has to be ordered they don't just sell them at the store um, okay I'm gonna fire the torch back up and cut that piece cut this piece out of the middle there one on each side I did something a little different. I'm going to try something. Since I have to cut that sleeve off before I can cut through the bolt, I didn't cut, I don't have to cut the whole sleeve off, but I got to cut through it because it's a separate piece of metal. And um, I just went on ahead and burned most of that sleeve off of there. I'm going to try to chisel the rest of it out, see if I can knock that bolt out without uh, cutting it in half. Well, it's loose. All I gotta do is, is uh, hold the wrench behind it, put an impact out here. All this stuff's still almost red hot. Well, that worked. <coughs> the last of the sleeve that was in there. That worked, but I had the heat on that bolt a pretty long time. And I was starting to burn through it, but I don't know if I made it through or not. But I think it's okay. I can probably reuse that. Um, or I can tr maybe I'll just take that one up and use it as a sample to replace the other ones. Um, anyway, we're getting there. Well, I got real lucky. I got both of the bolts out on this shock over here with, uh, with that electric impact. That, um, that Milwaukee half-inch drive. I got both both of them out top and bottom let's see uh, so there's only one left on the back behind this one let's see what happens over there okay on the last shock I got the bottom bolt out like I did the two both bolts on that one in front there but the top bolt it would loosen up to about half an inch out and then it would seize up I went back in back out back in back out and I just kept doing that and I just ended up having to just chop off the uh, the nut. It's right there. I just cut that off with a torch, but it was an easy cut because there was no sleeve on it, no rubber, none of that. It was just plain steel. So I just heated it up a little bit, whacked it right off. So I'll, right now I'm going to see if I can't knock that out of there with a punch and a, and a, and a hammer and knock it out the other side there. Got it out. Okay, just ready to clean this up. I still got to take these two bags off the front, but the bags are easier to take off, usually anyway. So, we're making progress. Now I'm putting the shocks and the bags on airbags. You see I got some new bolts here. Not all of them are new. It's, a, it's got six uh, points on the back of it, these little marks here. Those are, uh, when you got six of them, that means it's a grade eight. If you have three of them, it's a grade five. 
if you have either one or nothing it's a grade two um, it came with grade eight grade five is still plenty good enough um, grade two I don't know if I'd go with that it's a softer metal it's gonna rust faster and and, uh, and rust deeper but um, the one thing that that I want to bring up when you when you put these on okay you don't have to put you don't have to over tighten the, the nuts you just use your impact hammer it down a little bit but not until the impact stops it's no point in going that far with it because it just makes it harder to get them back off but one thing I do want to point out is if these shocks stay on a long time and the paint wears off of it this embossed number on there you want to just turn it you put the top on whichever way you wanted I chose to put the labels facing inside for the simple reason if anybody's looking at it and say oh you use Gabriel shocks or you use Monroe shocks or whatever I don't care what brand they are my uncle's a distributor he sent these to me at his cost so I got a good deal on them I just paid his cost plus shipping so I just chose to put the label towards the inside where I don't have to answer to anybody about what brand of shocks I got but it is important to have this embossed area facing where you can see it now you got four shocks they just randomly weld this eye on the bottom of the shock so between the four shocks you'll have at least one of them where you can see that you can see it nice and plain on that shock there and uh, I just do that on all four of them uh, try to make sure that that embossed area is visible because not all of them are going to be readable next time around but between the four surely you'll find something I mean I could put six shocks on because uh, the tag axle could use them too but I'm not doing that this time around because I don't use the tag axle very often